Live streaming is on. Good evening and welcome to our meeting. We are um, the Linker Internationals. Um, we're a working group of the Linker in Berlin. And today we have, um, well, a very timely and very important meeting ahead of us with three speakers um, who are taking the time to talk about a, a very important issue. Is on. My apologies, my internet just cut out very briefly. Um, so to say that again, we have a very important meeting coming up today, which is um, going to talk about, well, it's, it's about discussing Palestine and Germany, but of course we'll also be talking about what's currently going on in Israel-Palestine. And we have three speakers with us um, who are really some the best speakers we probably could have for this meeting tonight. So we have... Um, Hanin Zoabi, who was the first Palestinian woman to serve as a member of the Israeli Knesset. We have Susan Nyman, who's the director of the Einstein Forum in Potsdam and a member of the Initiative von Freie Welt Offenheit. And Christine Buchholz, who's a, who's a member of the Dem Parliament for Die Linke. And as you, I'm sure, all know, um, the German Bundestag passed a resolution that effectively banned BDS a couple of years ago. And discussing Palestine and Germany has been a very difficult uh, topic for a very long time. And it has uh, both historical roots and has, of course, a very, um, well, it's a, it's, it's a very difficult thing to talk about indeed, especially with both within the left and in the broader German society. And there's a kind of a speculation or perhaps this is how we feel we're living in Germany does that this topic is even more, uh, potent and difficult to discuss in other places here. Um, and we want to kind of tackle this idea today about to what extent it is even possible to talk about Israel-Palestine on the German left. How can we get past these issues? And why have speakers been banned? Why, what, where does this come from? What can we do to help it? And really, how can we move forward with the, you know, with the, um, with the, with the whole issue when, you know, Gaza is being bombed and people are dying and being displaced now and they have been for the last several days. So I don't want to go on because really it's not about me. Um, my name is Hannah. Um, I'm one of the speakers of, D -Link, of the D-Link International's working group. Um, and the first person that I'd really love to speak to us tonight is Hanin Soabi, who is speaking to us from Nazareth. Um, so please, Hanin, could, if you could tell us what's going on and how you're doing. And yeah, please take the floor. Hanin, you're, mute. Hanin, you're muted. <laughs> ah, okay. Thank you again. Thank you, I will repeat. Thank you very much for inviting me. For us, the Palestinians, it's so important uh, to, take, to talk and to use international platforms and to support us. Thank you for everything. But I, I want just to express something that I just got uh, a short information. I, uh, I don't know exactly that the Palestinian speakers uh, was supposed to be with us from the uh, Palestine Speaks, which is the largest Palestinian organization in Germany. I heard about them. And I don't know whether uh, as an outcome of all the bans uh, um, against the BDS movement was, that was this a cause for uh, the representative of the, the uh, Palestine speakers not to join us and not to be with us. So I just want to throw this in you and you will answer me during the, this conversation because it's so related to our discussion. It, is, it shows that the, uh, the, the real victim and the immediate victim of the Israeli uh, state of Zionism is the Palestinians, but I think that the whole world is suffering from Zionism. The oppression has moved and has expanded itself from Palestine to the whole world. And this is the topic, actually, of our discussion. What's happening now in, in Palestine? Uh, I think we cannot uh, underestimate the, 
attacks on Gaza, the displacement uh, of the Palestinians from Sheikh Jarrah in Jerusalem, uh, the restrictions in, uh, upon the Palestinians in Jerusalem, its act and, and the operation of the police in the 48. So actually it is not uh, an events or a clashes or a violence, it is the policy. Actually, it is the, 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 the most accurate and frank expression of the Israeli uh, apartheid system and the Israeli uh, plans towards the Palestinians. The mere existence of the, of the Palestinians is a threat to the Jewish state. Uh, and Israel is, was very frank since the, um, not the deal of the century, two years before the deal of the century, uh, that uh, now it, it, it uh, doesn't feel the need to maneuver between democracy and Jewishness, between its Jewishness side and its democratic side. Israel uh, read uh, a historical opportunity now uh, to eliminate any possibility of any recognition of the Palestinian rights, not just the two, the two states, but any kind of challenging the Israeli policies within 48, any kind of challenging the uh, Judaization policies in, in Jerusalem. And uh, the, the, the issue which we are dealing with is, is the cause that Israel is uh, escalating in its oppression, that Israel uh, doesn't hold account uh, for its crimes. So it seems that the Palestinian is not just struggling against Israel, against par par apartheid, against colonialist policies. Is, uh, the Palestinians are also struggling against the silence of the world, against supporting the active support of the world, the active support of Germany, the active support of Europeans, the, the active support of the USA to uh, uh, Israel, uh, for Israel. Uh, Jerusalem, uh, the Palestinians in Jerusalem has no citizenship. They have uh, permissions, a per, uh, they, are, they are residents. So Israel is treating them as a guests. And the whole idea is maximum land with minimum Palestinians. And this is the idea all over Palestine, but with different strategies, with different tools. Israel confiscate my land as citizens uh, through the laws, legally. It's not just de facto racism and apartheid, it's the jury. So the army confiscates the, the, Palestinians, uh, the Palestinian lands in Jerusalem, but the law, the Israeli law confiscate the lands of uh, the Palestinians inside Israel. The army demolish houses and the municipality of Jerusalem demolish, demolishes houses uh, in uh, Jerusalem and the uh, uh, Israeli law demolish, uh, also demolish uh, Palestinian houses inside uh, uh, Israel. And, and uh, I think uh, um, the, Israel has shifted after, that because this is the context. I, I, will, I will not, because the, you told me I have five minutes, a policy, the policies and the attacks on Gaza, I will not talk about it. I will not talk about the complete policies. I will talk about the meaning, the political meaning. The Israeli society has shifted toward the right since the Second Intifada, since, since 2000. Uh, and the Israeli ra and, and, and now they, there are a shift of elites inside Israel. Instead of the liberal, liberal Zionist elite, we see uh, settlers, we see a right extremist, right wing settlers and extremist, extremists, which they are the real elite now, which they are dominate, not just inside the Knesset, inside the media, in, in, inside the uh, society. 40% of the Israeli society think that they are chosen uh, people. They are the chosen uh, uh, people. And talking about the violence now and the oppression now, which is part of a policy, Sheikh Jarrah is the story of Silwan, is the story of Isawi, is the story of Al Azari, is the story of Jerusalem, is the story of the West Bank. Uh, 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 the reflection of the in, the in the Israeli media that it is violence from both sides, I think, as a reflection on the media, and clashes between extremists from both sides. No, it is not a balanced situation, it's an oppressed, uh, which is challenging the oppressor, a uh, colonialist. 
uh, uh, policies and um, the, the spontaneous uh, uh, reaction of the Palestinians inside, the, inside uh, Israel is a proof that actually uh, um, that Israel didn't uh, succeed at the end in dividing the Palestinian people. This is the question for me as a Palestinian. Okay, we face oppression, we face attacks of 16, 12 families has, has uh, went out of the, Israel has um, eliminated uh, uh, 12 families, which uh, 12 fam families has died, all of that. Uh, all, all of the members of the families, the families are, are not exist, uh, existing more. On, uh, um, we see the destruction. They said that the destruction in Gaza during the last six days is more than the destruction of, uh, of the 50 days of the attack on Gaza uh, in 2014. But the, at the end, the Palestinians inside 48, the Palestinians in Jerusalem and in the West Bank and in Gaza are challenging. Uh, we, we, are, we are demonstrating here in Nazareth for the sixth time excessive, excessively. Uh, Israeli police has uh, persecuted 700 Palestinians, beating them, taking them from their houses after midnight, uh, sometimes preventing them from seeing a, 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 a lawyer. And Netanyahu said yesterday, we will treat any demonstrator as a terrorist as a terrorist. So in Israel, there is no legal ways to struggle and illegal ways. The, the stone is like the rocket, is like demonstrations, is like even, even writing in the Facebook. It is, not the, it is not the rockets. It is not Hamas. It is the mere challenging and the mere political action and politi political struggle of the Palestinians because in Israel, there is no place for two people. There is no place for two people, and this is what the law, it is not an analysis, it is not what Hanin says, the, the law which has been passed two years ago, Israel as a state, a national state home for the Jews, frankly said that this is the land, even in Article 1, the law is not speaking about the Israeli state, about the Israeli land, the Israeli land from the river, to the, from the sea to the river, and they said it is the land of the Jewish people. So Israel is not just a state for a group of its citizens, deleting and eliminating the identity, my identity, my host historical connection to the land and to my people, but also she is a state for those who are not citizens at all. She is, Israel is speaking about, it is speaking about the Jews uh, everywhere, and I think it is anti-Semitic. I think the most violent expression of anti-Semitism is Israel. Israel, which she replaces the Jews, which she, which she even oppre oppressing the Jews who are democratic and, liber and liberal, as if there is no option for the Jew to be a democratic and liberal. This is anti-Semitism. To say that the Jew must be racist, must oppress, in order, it's part of the identity. Here in Israel, the meaning of Israel is to be hostile to Palestinians. You must be hostile to me. And, and, and Israel forgets that it, it immigrated to me. We, we didn't immigrate to Israel. We are not a minority. We, we are the indigenous people uh, uh, there. And, uh, and, 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 for, and, and, and the, the most violent, uh, viol violent aspect of Zionism, uh, which also, which the, the Jews is suffering, what I said, that there is no way to be liberal, liberal, liberal and democratic in Israel, a liberal and democratic Jew, because that it is the Yuri definition uh, that a calling as my party for, for, for a state for all of its citizens is a strategic threat. Democracy in Israel is a strategic threat, not Hamas. So the problem is not Hamas. Israel is not facing Hamas. Israel is using and justifying it, its attack on the Palestinian people using Hamas and rockets. But you also define my struggle without stones, without rockets, without anything. I was in the parliament. We are political. We carry, we, we, we use um, a, a democratic tools. And you, Israel, define our struggle for democracy as a strategic threat. 
So the mere existence of the Palestinians as Palestinians, as people, not as someone who eats and go to work and, 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 and finish his work and, and, and enter his home, if the Palestinians, uh, if they search for their place in the world, in the world on their homeland, and not just calling for democracy and equality. Actually, I am, I, am, I am offering a huge historical compromise by saying equality to the, colonial, to the colonialists, by, by, by struggling for equality with my oppressor. I think it's a, it's a huge historical compromise. It's a compromise. It is not a justice. For me, um, and of course calling for the right to free turn, but I, I, I don't, I, I'm not a racist. I am calling for equal rights with settlers, with those who came and expelled my people in 1948. And at the end, we are saying, we want sovereignty, we want justice, we want equality, equality and freedom and justice. And you are saying that this is a threat. So uh, please stop me. I will not stop myself. Anyone from, of you, you can stop me. Uh, this claim of Israel defending itself, it's an absurd claim. And this is what Israel is, based, uh, is using in order to just justify its attack. Uh, okay, Hadid, is... you asked me to stop you. So, uh... <laughs> so in my last sentence, I will struggle, um, even though I will have uh, just another question. Um, uh, the, the oppressor, the colonialist, the occupier has no right of defense. No, innocent people have right of defense, but not criminals. Criminals don't right. Uh, don't have the right of uh, self defense. Okay. Uh, thank you a lot, Hanin. Um, my name's Phil Butland. I'm the other speaker of the um, Link Internationals, and I'll be chairing the meeting together with um, uh, together with Hannah. Hanin. There'll be plenty of time for you to speak more, but um, just to let Christina and, and Susan say, say something as well. We're also getting a lot of questions in. Um, if you either go to the leftberlin.com and press the ask a question button or make a comment on the U YouTube page, then we are collecting your questions. There's already a lot of them, so we'll see what to do. Uh, just a clarification before we get to it. People are asking about um, why Palestine is strict isn't on this podium. There was a suggestion at one time that we would add to the, the three people on this podium to have a Palestinian Sprick speaker as well. At the end, we decided against that, and instead we're doing a meeting together with Palestinian Sprick and the, and the Yudhish Shishtima in a couple of weeks. Um, maybe more about this later, because we're supposed to be on the programme of Offenus Neukern with a meeting which is called Cancel Palestine, and it may be that they're trying to cancel our meeting. The meeting will go on whether or not we get into the Offenus Neukern programme, but more information about that that later we can talk about the other things later but let's go, get on on to the uh, thing in hand and to go to christina christina hanina's explained a lot about what's happening in israel what's happening in gaza at the moment a, a lot of the people who will be watching this are either not in germany or they don't necessarily follow the german press because they're, they're not germans maybe you could explain a little um how is this being covered by, covered by the German press and how much are people able to hear um, things that Hanin has just, um, just explained? Christina, could I just pause you for a moment? Apparently, we can't. Uh, we can't hit people on the YouTube stream. Can't hear you, and I don't know why. <laughs> uh, 
Um, because we, I can hear you fine. <laughs> Let me. What a day to have technical issues. <laughs> um. Sorry about that, everybody. Uh, we're not really sure why this is happening um, at all. Um, apparently, I apparently you can hear me fine, and we can hear Christine Christina fine, but the public can't hear her. So that's a that's a real shame. Um, she's going to rejoin the call in one moment. So hopefully, that, um, hope maybe while Christina's sorting of technical issues, we move on to Susan. Yes, um, Susan, you recently or when donald trump got erected you changed citizenship from u.s american to german so you you kind of have the experience of both countries and maybe you could so you could compare the how the reporting is between the two countries well i i could do that but i should say i didn't give i didn't change citizenship i was able to keep my american citizenship and um, I should say that I also have Israeli citizenship. I lived in Israel from, um, can, can I change this function? I cannot talk to myself. Could we have a grid so that I can look like I'm talking to other people? Thank you very much. Um, uh, I'm also an Israeli citizen. I lived in uh, Israel from 1995, just after the Oslo Accords, until the year 2000, just before the Second Intifada. So I have some sense of all three cultures and problems. Um, yeah, I, I would like to say something to some of what Hanin said. Uh, I entirely agree with you that Israel has shifted in the last 20 years to the right, and it continues to shift to the far right, um, further right than, I mean, now that there's a party in the Knesset that's further right than any um, European party uh, with the express wishes of uh, Benjamin Netanyahu. I also agree with you that the apartheid of which Ehud Barak, the last social democratic prime minister warned some 25 years ago, I think it's entirely right to call Israel an apartheid state. I think further that the attack on Al-Aqsa was an outrage. I keep asking myself how the world would have reacted if uh, po police had troops had stormed uh, St. Peter's in Rome on Christmas Eve with uh, bullets and tear gas. And, uh, you know, so I and, and I also agree with my Israeli friends, all of whom are uh, committed human rights activists, uh, that all of this was uh, the escalation has certainly been used and probably been planned in order for Netanyahu to uh, avoid getting kicked out of office and probably sent to jail. That is a piece of information that is not showing up in an awful lot of international media, but is certainly clear in reasonable Israeli media. So I agree with you uh, on all of those points. I cannot agree with one of your original st statements that Zionism has taken over the world because I don't even know what that means. And I, I would hope if you are as, and I understand that your position is a compromise from that position, but I think language like that is problematic and is the kind of thing that um, cannot help us get any further. But so let me answer Phil's question. The German media has been uh, shockingly one-sided. Um, it's almost impossible to get real information about what's going on. And in the last week, I have been 
and switching between, uh, you know, all kinds of different media from other countries to try to get a picture. Is, this is not, uh, what shall I say, I'm, I'm appalled at Biden's position. It's the first really big mistake that Biden has made. But I am heartened by the fact that the mainstream American press has been more critical than I have ever seen them be of Israeli policy since um, ever, actually. I have never seen them be this critical. Obviously, they're, they're people who, you know, are... are uh, uh, you know, saying we stand behind Israel, whatever it does. But we actually had a debate in Congress for the first time that was evenly matched between people who were uh, insisting on the slogan, Israel has a right to defend itself without ever looking at all of the things that Israel has been doing and been escalating in the past years to create this kind of conflict. Um, but you also had exactly the same number, 10 Congress people um, standing up and, and um, actually talking about conditions in Palestine. This is, uh, this is progress in the United States. It's not enough progress when people are being killed in Gaza. There's no question about that. It's not progressing fast enough to save Palestinian lives but it is definitely progressing. Other pieces of information that one never hears in Germany, it's something that I've been trying to explain to people for years, but I was rather pleased to see that the former US, uh, sorry, Israeli ambassador to the US, Ron Dermer, gave a speech or an interview a couple of weeks ago in which he urged Israel to forget about the American Jews because the American Jews were among the strongest critics of Israeli policy and to concentrate on the evangelical Christians uh, who make up 25 percent percent of the U.S. population and are understand that people who don't know this fact um, believe that there's a Jewish, a world Jewish conspiracy uh, emanating from New York, which is the reason why the United States has had an absolutely uncritical, unconditional support of every Israeli policy. Um, there is a Jewish lobby. There's no question about that, but Jews make up 2% of the American population. The strongest supporters of the occupation are Christian fundamentalists for an absolutely crazy reason. Namely, they believe that the more settlers they can pour into Palestine, the sooner the ap apocalyptic war will break out that has been uh, prophesied in the New Testament, after which um, the Messiah will come again. This is what they believe. And all Jews who don't immediately convert to Christianity will go straight to hell. I, I realize it sounds crazy that uh, the foreign policy of the what's still the most powerful country in the world is influenced by this kind of uh, craziness. Um, you know, and it's not just craziness, it's actually anti-Semitic craziness, um, since the Jews who don't convert to Christianity on this scenario will be uh, burn in hell forever. But as a matter of fact, it's true. There's lots of research done on this. Nobody really wants to face how ridiculous it is. But now the former Israeli ambassador to the United States has said it and urged Israel to focus its uh, propaganda and its fundraising, et cetera, on the evangelical Christian community rather than on the Jewish American community. So that is um, 
that is one of uh, one of the pieces of good news that you can hear in some Israeli papers, um, but certainly nowhere else that I have been able to trace. Um, there's a strong, um, strong condemnation of what's happened in the past week from the American Jewish community, infinitely stronger than anything that has happened uh, in Germany. There's um, almost nothing. And the uh, official Jewish community is concerned about uh, expressions of anti-Semitism that are coming from uh, Palestinian and other Muslim protesters. Um, I reject the entire uh, labeling of the conflict pro-Palestinian or pro-Israeli. This is the wrong way to talk. Uh, I am for universal human rights and those are what it are at issue here this is a football game where you cheer on your favorite team this is about universal human rights and unfortunately because i think christina was going to say and i hope she will say soon because of germany's historic consciousness of guilt um, towards the european jews they have an incredibly difficult time thinking of Jews as anything but victims. And they feel that making up for German crimes in uh, towards Jews 75 years ago entails uh, following any um, any policy that comes out of Israel. And unfortunately, the Netanyahu government knows exactly how to play on those feelings of German guilt by calling any expression of solidarity with Palestinians, any discussion of Palestinian rights, uh, by calling that anti-Semitic. And this is a gaping problem in Germany's um, reckoning with its Nazi past. Some of us have been trying to confront that. It hasn't been easy, even for those of us uh, who are Jewish. Um, but uh, you wanted to ask me later about Ved Offenheit. Maybe that's enough for a beginning. Um, Unless you want me to talk more, Phil and Hannah. I think let's see if we can hear Christine at time. <laughs> but thank you so much, Susan, for that. Yes, but not see you. Hey, let's, see, let's you. see if we can. Yes. Thank you so much, Susan, for your time. Apparently, we still cannot. I'm so sorry to disturb you, to stop you again, but for some reason, we people on the YouTube stream cannot hear you, Christina. And I don't know what to do about that. <laughs> um. We're trying to. Um, we're very sorry. Everybody, we are trying to sort this out. Um, okay, can you hear me now? Is, is it working now? So I just choose another device. Um, I could tell you something, I just checked on the leftberlin.com, you're coming over loud and clear. So if there are people out there watching on YouTube and can't hear Christina, 
move to the leftberlin.com and you can hear her there and you can you can also see her face okay okay um well i just want to to continue um with the point i wanted to make in the very beginning um um that um a left position can only be one that um, fights every form of discrimination exclusion and racism um a position that consistently opposes of course anti-semitism in general and um in germany most anti-semitic crimes come from the right but of course we also um stand against attacks like those on the synagogue like in gelsenkirchen um we stand against anti-roma racism anti-muslim racism and every other form of racism um a left position can only be a universalistic one um that is a position that defends defends human rights for all people regardless of where they live and by whom they are questioned and a left position must be an internationalist and emancip emancipatory one um it starts from the self activity of people as the decisive means for social stance and the left position always um takes a start thing point at the critique of the actions of its own ruling class and of course um a left position has to be consistently against war now what is our government doing the german government stands firmly by the israeli government heiko maas the foreign minister tweeted on thursday um quote hamas has caused the latest escalation by firing over 1000 rockets at israeli cities those who act so recklessly also bear responsibility for the appalling humanitarian consequences israel defends itself because it has to and israeli friend of mine wrote to me this is incitement to violence israeli media and um openly quote foreign politicians like heiko maas saying well israel's right to self defense um as a carte blanche to bomb gaza and to refuse ceasefire talks well and this is what heiko maas is doing he is not criticizing um israel for um the the bombardment in gaza and um this is the majority position in the mainstream media um in the left we have um different um, positions um where there is a minority taking a similar position like heiko maas but the main position is to balance between both sides and to be against violence um of all sides while this in abstract of course is not wrong but it leads to speechlessness in the face of the asymmetry of war um and i was surprised um positively by the statement of the students organization sds of die linke which took as a starting point for the current escalation um the situation um of forced evictions in sheikh jara and um thus the structural violence that characterizes the situation in israel and palestine and um they said as leftists we are always on the side of the oppressed we fight against all forms of racism no matter who it affects we want a good life for all and justice and peace this is what we demand um why we demand an immediate stop to the evictions as well as the construction of further settlements we demand a ceasefire because the the ones who suffer from escalation are the populations in the whole region we call for an end to discriminatory and racist laws and we call for the strengthening those who fight for peace and justice in israel and palestine by not remaining silent but by taking a stand i think this is the right position to take and to criticize the support of our government um um that our government gives to the war well this is i think the main th point i wanted to make in the very um beginning and um well i think it didn't get the first words i was saying but uh, i think it's okay to stop now and i will come in for the next question okay if we go to a new round of question i'm going to change the slight order in which we plan them because think of Christine a bit of a breather and move on to Susan um today is the second anniversary of the resolution in the German Bundestag which effectively criminalized the um boycott divestment 
the san uh, sanctions movement um you are one of the leading members around a response to that uh, the gg welthof knife from punkt drei as it's no as it's known here it's known by by other names names as well um just maybe if you could just explain very quickly what the Bundestag resolution is about but also what's your initiative and what's it trying to do and you need to unmute yourself you're still mute uh, susan okay how's that is that better okay um, I'm happy to talk about the Bundestag uh, resolution because although a number of us have tried to give this information in, in the press, the story has not been seriously picked up by anyone. And um, it's quite interesting. Uh, the, Christina might actually have been there when it happened. I don't know. Um, the first anti-BDS resolution was proposed by the AfD, uh, Germany's right-wing racist party. And unfortunately, like many right-wing racists, Donald Trump being a prime example, but uh, there are others in other countries, um, a unconditional, uncritical support for the politics of Israel is often used to cover up other forms of racism. And it's really quite extraordinary. So the, uh, the AfD proposed a resolution banning BDS entirely. And it put the other parties, I gather, in quite a dilemma because on the one hand, um, they don't want to be, um, they don't want to be seen as voting with an AF, AfD resolution. And on the other hand, of course, they don't want to be accused of, of being um, less against anti-Semitism than the AfD. So 16 days later, the other parties put forth, oh, the other problem, of course, is that actually banning BFD would uh, BDS would have gone against the German constitution. So 16 days later, um, the other parties put together a milder resolution, which the AfD did not sign on to. This did not ban BDS from Germany, uh, but it did say that no one who has ever supported BDS in any form or who's uh, can be hosted by a German institution that receives state funding. Now, this is an interesting trick because it allows people to say, well, we're, um, we're not censoring anybody. We're just saying you're not going to use taxpayer funding um, to spread what's called anti-Semitic propaganda. Um, by the way, one should say BDS is, <laughs> is hardly present in Germany. I mean, the whole thing, most Germans did, had never heard the initials BDS before the BDS resolution. Um, but the simply taking it uh, simply saying no institutions that receive state funding could have anything to do with anyone who had anything to do with BDS is uh, it's a neat little trick. One of the really great things about Germany, as opposed to, say, the United States, or I think in many ways even Britain, uh, there almost every form of cultural and intellectual activity in this country receives some form of, form of state funding. So yes, it's true. Someone could uh, you know, stand on a soapbox uh, in a park and uh, say whatever they wanted to, but it would be very hard to find a theater, an institute, a, you know, a museum, any kind of cultural institution that didn't receive federal funding. The information that the AfD were the first to provide, uh, to propose a resolution is perfectly public. It's on a, uh, the Bundestag website, but it's somehow not been 
paid any attention to. And I think that's quite important for understanding where the impulse comes to and just how terribly afraid people in Germany are of, so afraid of, of not being seen as the greatest opponents of anti-Semites in the world that they don't actually look at what's going on in Israel and Palestine. Uh, so anyway, after a series of incidents in which a number of, there was a call, there were calls to disinvite or defund um, speakers who had been invited, who had once signed or published a, a page in a book that was funded by BDS or whose uh, um, staff member had sent out a tweet describing uh, in this resolution, or in one case, an Israeli artist living in Berlin who had worked on a project called Unlearning Zionism was defunded, the project, the website was taken down. A number of cultural organizations of which my institute, the Einstein Forum is probably the smallest, a number of us got together to discuss the situation um, that very much goes against our mandate as wanting to provide platforms for all kinds of debate, open, serious debate from people all over the world without having to check whether they had ever signed a petition that uh, the anti-Semitism commissioner would decide was anti-Semitic. Um, and we got together, we made a public statement uh, in the Deutsche Theater last December. This was after we spent months meeting. It was described rather sinisterly as if we were meeting in secret. We were just trying to see if you could get 32 different organizations to agree on a public statement that everyone would sign. Anybody who's ever been in a committee knows how hard that is. And uh, I frankly expected, since this was a statement defending freedom of speech according to the constitution of the German state, that's why one of its names is GG 5.3 for Grundgesetz constitution, and it names the point at which freedom of speech is justified. I frankly thought this was going to blow over in two days. I did not as expect to get the kind of almost uniformly hostile press that we received. Um, but okay, it does say something about the silencing of particular positions inside the Bundesrepublik. We have a number of plans that we will continue to go, uh, continue to carry out. We're going to have a number of events inviting speakers who have been canceled or are in threat of being canceled. And I believe our website is just about up. So anyone who wants to follow what we're doing should check under Welt Offenheit. I I think the final version is not yet uh, live, but it will be live very soon. Great. Thank you so much, Susan. Um, and we do encourage everybody to check out the website and see what the initiative is planning on doing and tackling kind of uh, some of the issues in, you know, in their way. I think we would like to go to Hanin now. And um, Hanin, could you tell us um, what you think about the fact, I mean, of course, originally um, a lot of the campaigns for justice were uh, mainly led by Palestinians themselves. And now we're seeing initiatives like Susan's, for example, and the Jerusalem Declaration, um, which are being led by people who are not Palestinian. And do you find this to be a step forward in the debate? And in the, um, and, or do you think this, there are dangers that Palestinian voices will be excluded? Um, please kind of tell us what you think about that. Uh, your voice was uh, was not so clear. There were an interruption. Oh, sorry. <laughs> is 
how uh, me as a Palestinian see this kind of debate within Germany or what? Can you? In, or just, yeah, also just how you see, um, how you see various uh, initiatives that come out of, uh, that come from non-Palestinians. So, for example, Susan's initiative, the um, Bad Offenheit one or the Jerusalem Declaration. And how do you feel about them as a Palestinian? Yeah, uh, of course. First of all, uh, I don't know, but I got an impression, uh, my information, from my general information about what is doing, what's going on in Germany, that the situation is um, is much more uh, dangerous or much more restricted. There are there are a fear of expressing. A political uh, attitudes much more than the impression I am getting from from this debate, from the debate we are uh, uh, conducting here. Uh, for example, I was uh, I, I were several uh, times in Germany, which they cancelled the place. It is not BDS. Uh, it is not just a BDS. I was there uh, in Germany, and a lot of times. The, uh, the, the, play, the, rent, the, the place which I was supposed to be in has refuses to accept the, uh, the debate has, has, um, and, and, and we were forced to look for another uh, place. Um, a lot of journalists has uh, hesitated to interview me even when I was a Knesset member, a, a parliamentarian. So I don't think that it is a BDS, and and um, it is it is also uh, we should also think about how much preventing BDS activity is making a shilling effect. It is it is also to create an atmosphere of fear, uh, and when I say Zionist movement is a, a dangerous movement, not just. And this is this is what I mean. That uh, um, in order Israel wants to now it's so so uh, uh, and much more violent. Not not just because of the right wing, because of the concept of the state. And and and, and this is so important for me as a Palestinian. A Jewish state. The only meaning of Jewish state. Also, the logic of the, the, the notion, but also the practice, is to eliminate the political existen existence of the Palestinians. It is not the problem of a right-wing or fa even fascist, fascist government, because evacuating and expelling the Palestinians started 1948. It didn't start it within the last escalation. And I doubt it is not a BDS subject. I don't think that such uh, a debate about the meaning of Jewish state, about the Zionist as a colonial project, I don't know whether the German have freedom, has a real freedom to discuss it. I doubt it. So it is not the BDS. Maybe the BDS is the, is the um, um, uh, an easy justification for oppression, of uh, freedom of discussing the Palestinian rights and the Palestinian-Israeli uh, struggle. But this is just a justification and this is just to cultivate an environment of fear and an environment of why to have this headache. I, I, I don't mind the Palestinians. So, so I, I, don't, I, I don't accept that this is just an oppression re regarding the BDS. For me as a Palestinian, before the BDS, and not less important than the BDS, and the BDS is the most civic, uh, 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 civic and, and peaceful um, struggle. And of course, it's so important that Jerusalem de uh, Declaration is so important, not just for me as a Palestinian, because for me as a Palestinian, it is so important to connect between my freedom and even the European, uh, the European, the German uh, freedom of expression, um, uh, uh, and 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 for and this is the meaning that the Palestinian issue is an an issue of justice all over the world. It is the test. 
everywhere in the world for justice and freedom of expression. Palestinian, the Palestinian, if you are free to discuss the Palestinian issue in your country, this means that you are free of the American hegemony, of the right-wing hegemony. It is not defending the Palestinians. Defending the Palestinians is defending justice all over the world. It is defending uh, democratic values all over the world. It is defending the, the power of the left wing in Europe. It is not just an issue between Israelis and Palestinians. The, 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 the Palestinian issue become, because of Zionism, because of the Zionist lobby, because of uh, uh, oppression, oppression uh, of the freedom of expression in Europe, it becomes also the balance of power between the right wing and the left wing in Europe. Defending Palestinians and defending, it is defending all the uh, human values a accomplishment after the Second World War. It is defending the ICC. It is defending amnesty. It is defending the human rights organization. So, and this is what is in, and this is the threat. This is the real threat. We don't, we don't ask the world, we don't ask Germans, and we don't ask the Europeans to love the Palestinians. No, it is just, it is, it is just to to defend your values. And to defend that 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 the German self that German ability to be a real democracy, and 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 sometimes when I I I I met a lot of um, politicians in Germany, which they were so frank, and this is uh, in, already in 2012 2013. So before before uh, before. Uh, Banding the BDS, which they say we cannot, we, we, we I cannot express my my my, my views regarding uh, Israel. I cannot because, but I think that this is now is uh, this is now is shifting. This is now is it changing with the new generation. I want I want to believe so. I don't know if I am naive, but this is what I realize also that the, the, we 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 came to a point which the Europeans believe or realize that defending the freedom of expression regarding the Palestinian rights is to defend their political uh, uh, freedom of expression. It is defending their values. It is, this is defending their democracy. And it is, it's so obvious that Israel is, uh, is supporting the most fascist regimes in the world. Israel, the friends of Israel are Trump, the right wing, the populist right wing, the fascist right wing, Israel is the main, uh, main provider of weapons to dictatorship, to Myanmar, to... to so uh, the Palestinian issue is not a local issue for the Palestinians. It is. Israel is the last colonial, uh, colonialism, colonial situation, colonial oppression in the world. And it is an international, and uh, it is an international uh, issue, and it is a local issue. It is not just Israel; it is a local uh, American issue. Uh, and 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 the the, the support of uh, of Israel becomes part of the uh, German identity. It is not just. Uh, I don't know how to explain it, but also I have I, I read a little bit about it. It is part of. Uh, the ability of the Germans to to think themselves as humans, as 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 um, also solving the guilt of Nazism, but but also part of this uh, identity, and they and they don't connect between their support to Israel and their support to the crimes which Israel conduct, and I don't and I don't think that we can do this. We can really uh, enter deeply on the psychology of supporting Israel without, without discussing the notion and the meaning of a Jewish state and the self-determination for the Israelis. For me, I can recognize self-determination for the Israelis, even they came to my homeland, but, but uh, I cannot accept a Jewish state as as the uh, self determination solution, no, because Jewish state is a racist state by definition. A Jewish state, there is no way, no way, to understand Jewish state 
without deleting my rights and, and my right of self-determination. <laughs> because, because the only way to create Israel was to expel the Palestinians. How to, how to have, it, it was so clear to the Zionist movement that we cannot have a Jewish state with 55% Palestinians within its borders. And, and it is not the implementation of the taqsi, the, the law of uh, um, the law of uh, division of the Palestine, 1946, not the law of definition, the law of part, part, party, partition, the law of partition, 1947. Israel didn't implement the, 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 the law of partition because the law of partition didn't say to expel the Palestinians in order to have a Jewish state. The law of partition said you will be a Jewish state with half, half, half of the population who uh, are Palestinians and to give your half of pal uh, population a full and equal rights. And it was so clear to Ben Gurion and to those who create, who established and declared Israel that no, we must have a war crime. We must expel 85 Palestinians in order to create a Jewish state. So can the German... Can the German uh, uh, um, discuss this issue? It is not a BBS. It's an excuse. It is not a BBS. Can the German defy, uh, in, 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 in a free way discuss the, 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 the implication of a Jewish state, the meaning of a Jewish state? I don't think so. I don't think so. And, I, and, 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 and for me, it is not a Palestinian problem. It's a European problem. It's a German uh, 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 problem. And uh, the, Jewish, the, the uh, Jerusalem Declaration is a very courageous step toward, toward discussing the issue, these uh, uh, issues um, and, and challenging the IHRA, yeah, IHRA uh, definition of any uh, uh, Semitism. Uh, and I think, I don't know if I am a naive, you can correct me, that we came to, the Europeans maybe, came to a, um, a point which uh, they think that they are losing their own freedom, not the Palestinian freedom. They, 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 that there is a government within a government. The, 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 the Zionist lobby is forcing European countries to change their laws, to change their values. It, it is so clear now that defending Israel means to change basic democratic values within the Western world. You must change yourself in order to continue supporting crimes because you are supporting crimes. What is Israel now? To have the, what is Israel now? Israel is, Israel now, the, the main function of Israel is to, uh, to fight against the basic rights of the Palestinian. Israel means now to evacuate. This is, this is the, main, the main project of Israel. To war the Palestinian is to el eliminate their rights. And Israel cannot see, cannot see any way of securing, defending itself without oppressing and killing and attacking and evacuating and expelling the Palestinians. So I don't, this, this debate about the meaning of self-defense, can, can, can you give the criminal right of defending himself? Uh, someone who can, can, can come to rape me, can, can you, can, is there any meaning of self-defense defense for criminals, for rapers? No, no. And, and again, by 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 talking more about the the way Israel treats the Palestinian citizens is the the, the most sophisticating and I think I, the, the most um, efficient way to clarify the message that it is not the story is not Israel vis-a-vis -vis Hamas Israel is not just struggling against Hamas and, and, and fight Hamas. Israel is fighting the Palestinians all over the, all over the world and, and within Palestine, historical Palestine, especially the citizens. 
when I was a Knesset member, I was disqualified from running to the election four times. I was stripping of my passport, international passport. I was prevented from, run, from um, serving in the Knesset for one year, more than one year, six month, penalty of six months, not to vote, not to discuss, not to have the right to discuss uh, uh, issues within the Knesset, six months and four months and two months and six months. So even being a parliament, even uh, being elected, has no, has no meaning for me as a Palestinian. Has no meaning for me. My land is not secure. My house is it's not secure. In Israel, Israel there are 66,000 houses under demol demolishing threat. Not Sheikh Jarrah. Not Sheikh Jarrah. I'm talking about Lud. I'm talking about Nazareth. I'm talking about Galilee in, in Israel. There is, a, a, there is this a, a expression uh, developing Galilee and developing the Negev. Do you, do you know what the meaning of developing Galilee? Judaizing Galilee. It's to secure, it's to confiscate maximum land for the, uh, 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 for the use of the Jewish population, to secure us. So I am a citizen and, and one of the main function of the state is to secure my land from me. I am I am a threat to the land, so they must secure it and confiscate it to the use of the Jewish. Uh, we cannot build inside 48. So there is, there is, it is, it is not an occupation. It is not crimes uh, against humanity in Gaza and war crimes just uh, 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 against the Palestinians in Gaza. It's, it's also the same way, but within different tools, by different tools. The same way of eliminating my identity. I, I can, in the Knesset, in the Knesset, when I say I'm a Palestinian, they would just, they would just look at me with, 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 so, with a, a so surprised look. What do you mean, Palestinian? For, uh, the Israelis really, they express the Palestinians. And they start history in 1948. There, there were no history before 1948. And they expect from, it's a humiliation. It's not just discrimination. They expect from me to accept Zionism, to accept the fact that this, is, uh, this, is, this land belongs to the Jewish people. And I am just a guest. I am there because of the Israeli democracy. Really, really forgetting that, that they have expelled 85% is an ethnic cleansing, an ethnic cleansing. Hanin, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I think we might have to move on to the next question. I'm sorry, you did, uh, if, if, I'm very sorry to have interrupted you there. Um, I hope that's okay, unless you would like to finish your sentence. So, yeah, for me, uh, uh, maybe I didn't, uh, didn't uh, answer the question, but uh, uh, the, the, the last developments in Germany, like Jerusalem Declaration, I think maybe we are entering a, a new phase in which the uh, German, the Europeans, is, so it, uh, it, it is developing a clear connection between their freedom and the Palestinian freedom. And yes, the Palestinian freedom has become part of, of any people's freedom. And the, and the way you are treating the Palestinians, the way you are supporting Israel is is an indication of the way you are treating and supporting your own democratic values. Thank you so much. That's a really great way to sum up your input just now. Thank you for that, Hanin. Um, I would now like to ask Christina about uh, Die Linke's position on what's going on. Um, I mean, first of all, I think uh, there's been also a lot of questions um, from the audience um, talk, asking what, what really is, what, what is Die Linke's position on the BDS resolution, the Bundestag resolution, um, um, what, and also what kind of Dilinka, how it's reacting to the current situation in Palestine. So if you would like to talk to us about that, that would be great. Well, well yeah, okay. Um, I start off, first of all, I think it's, um, it's absolutely true that um, like the, the resolution, um, but also like the broader debate um, um, is, is aimed to silence criticism of the right-wing Israeli government. Um, um, it is a silent Palestinian voices, 
but it's also to silence critical Jewish Israeli voices. And of course, it's um, to silence uh, criticism of the federal government supporting the right wing Israeli government. So I think this is um, this is the core. Um, well, um, I think I disagree at a point. Um, it is not forced by um, by the Zionist lobby to our government. Um, I wouldn't say that the government is taking um, these positions in their own interest as um, um, yeah, an imperialist yeah. um, actor. Um, and I think it's important to take a close look at how um, the um, the debate was um, was 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 organized in Germany. Um, the debate about BDS was preceded um, by a resolution um, in the Bundestag against um, anti-Semitism. This um, resolution was brought in in January 2018 by the Conservatives, the SPD, the Greens, and the FDP. Um, it was a joint motion um, in which they, in addition to position that could be absolutely be approved, blamed Muslim migrants in particular for the strengthening of anti-Semitism in Germany. Um, and this motion also condemns um, the BDS uh, campaign. Um, the AFD, and this is um, the, what, what um, Susan also was talking about, which wants to hide its fascist wing and its anti-Semitism, was not attacked in this motion on anti-Semitism, and it could easily agree to it since the motion assigned the main responsibility for anti-Semitism in Germany to Muslim migrants in particular. Um, and for that reason, the Die Linke did not vote in favor of it. We abstained because it, we supported other positions um, that were correct in this motion. But I think um, it is very important to understand what yeah, the history of, um, of the motion and, and how the debates were, um, yeah, were going um, on also a longer time. Um, the initiative for the BDS motion clearly came from the right wing spectrum of the parliament. Um, as I um, remember, the, in April, the AFD voted, brought a kind of draft motion to condemn BDS, but then the AFD was the first who put in a motion that wanted to ban um, um, BDS. And then, like as Susan said, in May, an interfactional motion by uh, all the city the Conservatives, the SPD, the FDP, and the Greens um, uh, passed, but was passed by the Bundestag um, under the title Resolutely Confronting the BDS Movement Combating Antisemitism. Um, and um, the core argument um, adopting the um, IRA working definition, which I don't have time to go in, was um, the claim that BDS, the BDS call, quote, in its radicalism leads to the branding of Israeli citizens of the Jewish faith as a whole. And it says it, the, the, the pattern of argumentation and methods of the BDS movements are anti-Semitic, full stop. Um, and um, well, my position and that of the majority um, of, of Die Linke was um, um, that the motion should be rejected. Um, there were different um, arguments, actually. My argument was um, it's in that message to denounce BDS as um, anti-Semitic, well, even though the Linke does not support the campaign, um, as other sister organizations do, um, but we respect when people, um, out of criticism of the Israeli occupation policy, um, which has been condemned by numerous UN resolutions, support the BDS campaign, um, because the criticism um, and protest is directed against the policies of the Israeli government and not against Jews. And this is legitimate and must not be slandered in a blanket way. Um, and I think it's also important to understand uh, who benefits from equating the criticism of the Israeli government with anti-Semitism. First of all, the right-wing government in Israel. Um, and um, I think it's absolutely right to say that the space for open debate has been narrowed um, far more dramatically in Israel itself, but also um, in Germany and other places. And of course, conversely, this also makes it more difficult for criticism of PA and Hamas corruption and policies to be articulated within the um, Palestinian population and movements. So Die Linke voted um, no to the government resolution, but it was a weak no. Uh, I want to explain this. Um, um, Die Linke um, had their own motion um, um, that um, well, I didn't... Um, I wasn't in favor for it. Um, I argued against it, but it was um, 
adopted by the parliamentary group and um, it shared many of the false claims of the government's motion. It had a weaker formulation than the government motion related to the criticism um, to Germany and not to the international campaign, but it continues to, um, to place the BDS campaign in the context of anti-Semitism. Um, so my criticism that it still promotes the thesis that uh, the call um, would brand, uh, the, 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 the boycott call um, of BDS would brand Israeli citizens um, of the Jewish faith as a whole and thus, thus promote anti-Semitism. Um, and I criticized that it did not express any criticism of the German government policy towards the Israeli occupation, the settlement policies, um, policy and the human rights violation. And for example, not condemning the arms sales um, uh, of, to, from Germany to, to Israel. And it had no reference to the policies of the right wing Netanyahu government, um, other than a general call for a peaceful solution to the, to the conflict um, um, and to the two state solution. So it, had, it did not have the intention to counteract the desolidarization with the Palestinians, and it was not an offensive, but a defensive reaction to the attacks from the right. And it was a fearful reaction because um, one believed that one can thus evade the attacks from the right. And um, I think this, um, this notion is so wrong, it's far from it. Um, and this time surrounding the decision in the parliament, there were several decisions that made the fatal effect clear. Cancellation of, um, for example, the, the bank account of the Jewish Voice for Just Peace in the Middle East. Then the, 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 um, the head of the Jewish Museum, Peter Schieffer, who had to resign as the director. Then the Rosa Luxemburg Foundation, um, uh, the, the foundation of the, um, of the left party was forced to cancel an event at the um, Kirchentag um, in Dortmund. It's, it's, a, it's like a big church event um, with the liberation theologian Ulrich Duho and Farid Isak, a liberation a Muslim South African liberation theologist um, active in the, in the um, BDS movement. And um, on a absolutely uh, um, um, another topic, um, but this event um, um, had to be, um, um, couldn't take place in the, in the church event, in the Kirchentag. Um, it moved uh, um, um, at a place outside well, later, the Kirchentag president apologized to Ulrich Duho, the, um, the, the person who was um, um, yeah, um, diff, yeah, called an anti-Semit in the, in the, in the press. Um, and I think this is an, an example of um, um, yeah, what happens if you just have a very weak position on, on this right-wing attack. Um, but I think it's also to see that for example, the scientific service of the Bundestag um, took the resolution apart. Um, they said, quotation, excluding BDS affiliated persons or groups from using the event solely because of expected undesirable expressions of opinions is therefore incompatible with the Grundgesetz, with the constitution. Um, and they said that in particular, the resolution of the German Bundestag um, does not constitute a basis that could justify such a restriction. Um, this position is even taken by the lawyer of the Bundestag in a court case against the resolution um, um, as a reason not to deal with the lawsuit against it. So they, they know that legally um, um, they, they are, <laughs> I don't know if, they're saying, if there's a saying in, in, in English, but uh, they're on thin ice. It's, it's, uh, um, it's, not, it's not a serious um, um, legal position. So what is the reason? It is um, um, to create this atmosphere of, um, um, of fear, to silence um, the criticism of the Israeli government, to silence Palestinian and um, critical Jewish Israeli voices, like I said before, and also to, um, to silence the criticism of our government. Um, um, in its support for the right-wing um, Israeli government. And I think this is the core, um, uh, core intention. So I will stop here. Thank you, Christina. Thank you, everyone. Time is running on and we have got so many questions. 
and so little time to do everything. We're hoping they will have followers of that. As I said, we are planning a meeting together with Palestine District uh, at, the beginning, at the beginning of June. What we're going to do is we're going to ask a selection of the questions. I'll start with some questions which, which anybody can answer. Then Hannah will read out some questions to, to Susan. I'll read out some questions to Christina. And uh, Hannah uh, will read out some questions to Hanin. You can't possibly answer all of them, but hopefully um, you can find things and which you're going to do. And we're going to try and uh, try and be finished by nine o'clock be before people get to um, to Muda to uh, the Zoom side. So here's the general questions. A uh, basic most of the general questions are asking the same thing, which is what can we do. Um, but a typical one is this. I get a lot of mansplaining about how Germans are to behave on Israel, as if I didn't know. And people try to shut me up on social media at the slightest criticism of Israel's bombardment of Gaza. To date, 59 exclamation mark Christina uh, ch uh, children killed. How can we overcome the paralysis? There's another question. Does the left make a difference between anti-Semitism and anti-Zionism? As a comment that uh, Felix Klein, who represent, representing some Jewish group in Germany, although he's not Jewish himself, commented that Jews in Germany should not be held accountable for what the Israeli government does. But isn't that exactly what the Israeli government has been trying to convey? There is no difference between Israelis and Jews outside of Israel. This needs to be addressed. Um, another question, what we can do. Um, there's a question about the Jerusalem Declaration, which Hanin has already talked about, if Christina and Susan want to say anything. And a question, I would often like to, I would like to hear what the speakers have to say about Islamophobia and how it often manifests in German society as disingenuous concern about anti-Semitism. Before I move on to Hannah, there's someone who, not a question, but I absolutely love the point that Hanin is making right now about Israel's right of self-determination at the expense of wiping out Palestinians. Extremely powerful and right on. Um, and now uh, Hannah will sum up the questions which have been put to uh, Susan. Um, so I know this. Okay, I'll just ask a couple of questions that were directly to you, and perhaps, and then if there's anything else you'd like to comment on that's been said, I think that's probably a way to go. And I think this is a good time for me to say that I slightly misspoke earlier when I called it Susan's initiative, the Belt Offenheit initiative. It's an initiative that Susan is part of, of course. Um, that was just me um, doing. Uh, it's, it was a language thing, so I'm, I apologize about that. Um, a couple of questions that were for you, Susan, were about um, one was about what you think personally about the Jerusalem de Declaration, uh, whether you think that's a viable alternative, whether that actually will help people, for example, um, to talk about anti-Semitism and Israel-Palestine within in, within context like uh, you know work context like work, whether people that's whether it's going to protect people from accusations of anti-Semitism and uh, you know and. Uh, in their daily life um, and from be and kind of protecting from being, let's call it cancelled. Um, there's also another uh, question if uh, there's somebody who said who's also an American Jew living in a US American Jew living in Germany now and she was wondering if you can elaborate on ways that she can leverage her voice, particularly as a um, descendant of somebody who survived um, the Holocaust. Um, and to kind of help with lobbying Germany to hold the Israeli government accountable for what it's doing. Um, there's, uh, and there's another question, there's, I mean, there's so many questions, everybody. <laughs> um, and another question for you, Susan, was uh, use the term apartheid, which I agree on. Why is it forbidden in German mainstream outlets to be used for Israel? And the same for the term occupation. Um, and also is in Germany f failing in a moral contradiction by committing to its guilt versus closing the eye on Israel's humanitarian crimes? How can Germany move from symbolic guilt to abstract values like that? Um, I told you want to ask the questions for Christina. And, yeah, there now, there now, and again, this is not all the questions which are asked to Christina, but um, we'll try and get as many answers as we can. One, I will quote this directly that someone has pointed. Would someone from the Linker care to comment on the disgraceful statement of its chairpersons, Hedig Velzow uh, and Wissler, on the recent escalation? Um, 
question. I'd like to know the argument that's against the BDS movement in Parliament and the counter argument. As far as I know, BDS is a peaceful activism but seems to face official resistance. That was another one which was put directly to Christina. Another question to Christina, the German state supports Israel unquestioningly. Do you believe that the German people as a whole sympathise with this position? And a final comment, I appreciate Christina Buchholz's work in the Bundestag on Palestinian issues, but there are other people on the left in the federal states who are behind the federal state resolutions that define BDS as anti-Semitic. This has had huge repercussions on public debate. Many activists working for back to, uh, Palestinian rights have to work anonymously, and when they don't, they literally become unemployable or even criminalised. How can we achieve a more, a more open atmosphere within leftist organisations as well as the party? This has to be one of the first stop in opening up this discursive space regarding these topics in Germany. Move back to Hannah on the questions which have been put to Hanin. Yes, yeah, so this is... Um, don't... Uh... Don't feel like you have to answer everything that's been asked. These are the questions that have been put forward to us in the chat. Put down when you are. When oh, you are sorry. Reading. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, so, Hanin, there were some questions for you specifically. Um, and of course, all three of you, I mean, thank you again for being here tonight and for answering and all the questions that have been put forward to you and uh, for, you know, for taking the time. So, feel free to answer whatever you want to answer. So for Hanin, some of the questions were, um, Israelis of, oh, is, it often claim that Palestinians have been offered peace treaties many times, but they still stick to the original right and choose violence. What's do you answer on that one? Um, and how do you manage, or how did you manage this conflict of interest when you served in the Knesset? Um, how I manage what? Uh, the, the voice is not clear. I don't Sorry, your con the conflict of interest. You've already touched on this a little bit. You know, being Palestinian in the Knesset, how you have you manage this uh, issue for yourself? Um, um, and then somebody has asked the question about um, having a single secular state and whether that is a viable solution or something that you can see happening in the future. Um, and do you think Zionism is just a colonial project or also an imperialistic project? So which of you would like to, again, don't try and answer all the questions, but find the questions which you think um, particularly apply to you or you particularly have something to say about. Um, the, okay, great. Susan, we have commented oh, as well that you're invisible. So if you can put your camera on so people, I, I can't see you now. Oh, now I can see you, yes, again. Great. Go ahead, if you'd like to start, and please go ahead, Susan. Thank you so much. Susan, I'm so sorry to interrupt you, but apparently we can't, people on YouTube cannot see or hear you right now. <laughs> I don't know why we have this issue again. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it's been difficult. Um, yes, if you wouldn't mind, and then if perhaps somebody else could take on the floor and I would come back to you, Susan. I'm very sorry about that. Thank you. Um, Christina Hani, would one of you like to perhaps take over now? Hani, you want to you want to start? Please, Christina, go ahead. Okay, okay, I, I will go ahead. Um, uh, well, first of all, I um, I just want to reply to the uh, question about the statement of uh, Susanne Henning Belso and Janine Wissler. Um, so it was replaced by a um, not a perfect but a better <laughs> statement uh, of the party committee 
Um, um, I can't because I'm, I can't put it um, uh, online at the moment. Maybe someone can, can put it in the chat. Um, um, but it reflects the, the immense pressure that is um, also on, um, on, uh, on Die Linke. Um, the question about uh, the uh, opinion of the government and, uh, and the broader population, I think that uh, people who, um, like if you talk to normal people on the street, um, they have much more uh, sympathetic position towards the victims um, of oppression and war than um, the ruling classes have. And so, um, of course, there is a minority that has also like um, anti-Jewish or anti-Semitic sentiments. But um, I think the most uh, most of them understand the, 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 the character or can can at least um, um, have an idea of um, of the reality of um, oppression and, and and the victims of war uh, because it's not the first um, war we are we are seeing in um, in, in um, yeah in 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 Israel and in Palestine um, about the debates um, in in the left um, and maybe um, yeah what what can people do um, I think. One, one thing I want to mention, which is, I think, very important um, is, um, and this is a bit of a, a change um, in the kind of um, how these debates are, um, are led in, 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 in Germany, is the emergence of a, as I see it, as a new Palestinian left anchored in the, in the migrant movements of the recent years, as Palestine speaks, um, that is linking up with Jewish leftist organization in the Jewish Voice or the Jewish Federation. Um, and um, these organized together um, protest against war and occupation, against anti-Semitism and anti-Muslim racism. And um, yeah, these organizations have managed to build connections um, and which is other and also especially migrant um, organizations and um, create a much better um, uh, yeah, situation to discuss um, the um, the question of Palestine and um, already uh, before um, um, or, or Palestine speaks has declared this um, um, this this weekend very clearly against all the um, yeah accusements they had to um, to face that um, um, just as we um, do not this is a quote uh, do not need the solidarity of those who abuse Palestinians for their anti-Semitism. We do not need the solidarity of Turkish fascists who want to poison our struggle. We are absolutely in solidarity with the Kurdish liberation struggle. And I think this was a very strong um, statement and shows that things are like happening. Um, only the German left, with a few exceptions, stands apart from this new leftist um, movement. And I think it's important to, 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 ex uh, to, to actually build links. I think the debate of the Jerusalem Declaration um, and the criticism of the IRA definition um, is also very important. So um, the Rosa Luxemburg Foundation published a um, very um, um, serious study um, um, of a, um, of a um, specialist in the question of um, anti-Semitism, Peter Ulrich. Um, that had an important effect in, in the debate as the Initiative Weltoffenheit um, did. And I think um, this, this is, um, of course, these, um, all these initiatives um, get a strong um, counter, <laughs> counter movement. But I think um, um, it is important to, to, to link with these, all these different um, developments um, and to um, um, yeah, to, to, to stand clear against war, but also create new spaces to debate um, the situation and also um, yeah, the German response to what is happening in Israel and Palestine. My suggestion is that um, the German left takes um, a position on the following points and we put these points in a um, motion we want um, the party um, to uh, discuss. First of all, um, um, that the goals of the Palestinian civil society, an end to occupation and the construction of settlements in the Palestinian territories, the removal of the separation wall, the recognition of equal rights for Arab Palestinian citizens of Israel and the return of, of the Palestinian refugees supported by resolutions of the UN General Assembly and the UN Security Council 
uh, is endorsed by um, the Linke. Um, my suggestion is that in Germany, um, um, even if we don't support like the BDS campaign, like other leftist organizations also in, or, or partner organizations, um, but we reject the characterization of the BDS campaign as anti-Semitic and clearly oppose space bans and other repression against the campaign. Um, as this, like we are discussing it this evening, is massively um, restriction of freedom of expression um, in the human rights discourse. And of course, that we take a firm stand against anti-Semitism, anti-Muslim racism, anti-Roma racism, and all other form of racism and um, exclusion. This means um, that um, if we identify anti-Semitism of individuals acting within the BDS movement, um, it, yeah, so we have to counter this, but it bases the argument on these statements of facts and not on the general support for BDS. I think it's important to openly um, um, yeah, discuss this, to create spaces to, to have an, an open debate, also um, yeah, connecting in, in, a, in a firm opposition against the war. And I want to, um, to invite also you who are, who are listening now to this debate and who, who are also critical about positions um, that are taken by um, by Die Linke to, to join us um, and to um, to join the argument because I think um, because the situation is changing and we have initiatives like Red Offenheit, we have movements like um, when Palestina spricht, Palestine speaks, that um, this changes a bit um, yeah, the, the situation in society and gives us also a better um, um, a better condition for having um, the right conclusions in the German, um, uh, also in, in Die Linke. And so I invite you to, to also join Die Linke and also join um, the debate and change Die Linke, make it better. Uh, thank you, Christina. And for those of you who aren't German, the Linke Internationals group is we're doing what we can to bring a, a different perspective to the German debate and to shift the party to a more um, acceptable position, shall we say. We'll try again with Susan. Can you try uh, speaking again, Susan? I can hear you. We, we need our people who are listening on YouTube to say if, if they can. Uh, uh, but just, just, yeah. No one's complaining yet, so so so. Really sorry about the technical problems that we're having. Oh, wait a minute. Um, sorry, they say they can't hear you still. Um, this is terrible. Um, I am He's just. Camera operator here on in the chat. So the technical problems that we're having. Uh, um. Oh, wait a minute. Um, sorry. I I'm not really sure what to advise apart from that. Um. Let's move on to Hanin, and um, we'll see. If it Yeah, I understand entirely. He just said in the chat that he also couldn't hear you. Uh, he can't hear you in the call, which is very bizarre as to how half of us can hear you and half of us can't. I, if you would say shortly, Hannah or I can, uh, we could both hear you when people can hear us. I, I,
Susan, I'm sorry to frustrate you again, but I think I think if people can't hear you and we haven't been able to... Yeah, no, no, so, sorry, Han. Yeah. Uh, oh, I, sorry. I suggested that um, oh, sorry. Uh, I... Susan said something and then we say what she... Uh, I'll, I'll say what Susan just said. Uh, sorry, sorry about this, people, people outside. Uh, Susan was one of the signatures of the Jerusalem de Declaration. Um, she thinks it's a step forward. She thinks that one of the problems um, uh, that it is that it takes the IHRA declaration too seriously, which came before, which um, equated uh, anti-Zionism with anti-Semitism, among other, among other things. Um, did I miss anything significant? Oh, sorry. Uh, Yeah, and she completely uh, agrees with Christina that anti-Semitism is a, a form of racism and the JDA start, ma makes its starting point, and that's one of its strengths. I, I'm really sorry. About, yeah, sorry. Come here. Maybe, maybe I about to say because people are getting longer and thick places of silence, silences and marking. Uh, Susan recommends a book by Omri Bohm on the binational state, uh, binational state, which is, if I got it the right way around, is available in English and nearly and soon available in Germany. She thinks that's the uh, that uh, yeah. okay. So, yeah, it's av it's available. It's available in German and will be available in 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 English. And think that's the uh, viable way to go forward now. Yeah. And the question to the American Jew who is asking um, what she can do uh, um, with relatives who have died in the Holocaust, there are networks of um, American Israeli Jews which are getting together in, in Germany. There's not a full organisation yet, um, but um, we can put you in touch with Susan who can tell you more. I can tell from our side, we do a lot of work together, the Yudish Shimra as well, which is aiming for sim similar things. But there are networks getting together, particularly on Twitter, with people not trying to do this and not being left alone. I'm really sorry, Susan, and everybody, for the technical difficulties which have been besetting us all night. We, we, anyone who has a conspiracy theory can use, can use it now, um, or you can just blame bad technics. Um, we'll finish off with Hanin, uh, then we'll have some announcements, and then um, you can all go home. Oh, yeah, just one thing. People have been sending uh, questions in the last 15 minutes. We already had way too many questions to start. And you know, it's not that we don't think they're good questions, but we'll be organizing other events where we'll try and address those. So, Hanin. Yeah, thank you. A uh, first question about the violence of the Palestinians and that they refuse all the peaceful agreements. I think when you uh, one of the results of um, supporting crimes is to cultivate also an absurdic logic. You, you cannot really sometimes you you cannot really support uh, cr war crimes without distortion in in your, some distortions in your logic. So you are saying those who are accusing Palestinians of violence. They are saying, okay, Israel came to Palestine, uh, evacuated and expelled the Palestinians, took out your land, took out your houses, 
and you are the violent, uh, the violent side if you struggle against this. I really cannot answer this question. I really, th 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 there is, I cannot, okay, maybe some statistics. Okay, after exploring my people, after taking my land, after taking my houses, not just in 1948, uh, as I said, house demolition is Sheikh Jarrah now, is Silwan, is, 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 is also the, the phenomena of unrecognized villages inside the Negev, south, south of historical uh, Palestine, inside Israel. There are uh, 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 33 unrecognized Palestinians, Palestinian villages. They, are don't, they don't exist on the Israeli maps. Why? Because the plan, Israel plans to evacuate these villages from the, uh, the Palestinians from their villages and confiscate them and, and, and build a Jewish uh, villages on the same land. Uh, since 1967, uh, Israel has killed 40,000 Palestinians. Uh, in Gaza, uh, in the recent years, Israel has killed 3,800 Palestinians, out of them 900 children. The ratio, the, 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 the ratio of killed Palestinians to Israelis in the Second Intifada wa was 4 to 1. In 2006, 30 to 1. In 2007, 40 to 1. In 2008 till 2016, 65 to 1. In 70% of, of those whom Israel killed uh, in Gaza, 70% were civilians. 5% of those who were killed, Israelis who were killed, were civilians. You are putting snipers in front of Palestinian children in Gaza. Is this a Palestinian violence? Really? I don't know. It is, uh, so one of the outcome, one of the victims of Israel is logic. Is reason, basic reason, is basic ethics, and is basic humanity. This is also a victim of Israeli crimes. It is also the victim and, and the outcome of defending the criminal over and over and over. Israel become, be, be became and become more violent with, 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 with more, more oppre oppressor. And we are talking that those who are struggling against their oppressor, they are the violent side. Okay, I really don't have the, the ability. I'm not a uh, Bernard Shaw. You need Bernard Shaw in order to, 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 to answer this question. So just look at the statistics. <laughs> just, just, look, um, just look at the story, the basic story. Uh, and just look at the Palestinians now. They are in the refugees camps. They are outside Palestine. And they, are, they live within concentration camps, in, 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 no, inside ghettos, not concentration, in the, inside ghettos within their homeland. And you are telling me that I am the violent uh, side. Really? Okay, it's Yani Shapu for, Shapu for Israel, which, 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 um, uh, okay. Now, uh, second question. Um, a conflict of interest. No, there is no conflict. I am a Palestinian. There is no conflict. I don't have conflict of identities. I am not an Israeli. I don't believe, I don't feel an Israeli citizen because Israel is state for the Jewish. So it is so clear for me and for Israel. So clear for Israel that I am not, a, I am technically. I am an accident, and I am I am citizen. There is a, 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 a um, article, a, a essential uh, citizenship vis-a-vis -vis accidental citizenship. I am a citizenship a citizen by accident. No, I feel I am one hundred percent Palestinian, and I don't have this conflict. I am in my homeland. I didn't immigrate to Israel. 
maybe if I immigrated to Israel, I would feel some some conflict, contradictions. But no, I was here, my homeland. I didn't uh, leave my homeland. Someone, a colonial power, came to me, and 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 and, and Israel gave me the citizenship in order to be accepted as a member in the UN. And I didn't. I, I, no one asked me to, whether to accept the citizenship or not. But the moment I had citizenship, I took it seriously. I took it seriously, not in order to, to adopt Zionism, not by adopting Zionism, not by adopting the Israeli a, 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 a discourse, not by feeling inferior, not by accepting the superiority that the Israeli the way the superior way the Israeli Israelis uh, treat me, no, by saying okay you want citizenship, this is the way I understand citizens citizenship for equality. So the, you it is Israel which doesn't understand citizenship. It is Israel which doesn't take citizenship seriously, which, which have a distorted notion of citizenship because in Israel. And you can enter the website of the Israeli Institute for Democracy. I don't know which, they have a yearly index of democracy by asking, by having a poll, uh, about an, an index of democracy and asking uh, uh, different questions. So I think 2014, 2000, I don't know, after 2014, they ask the Israeli society, what's the meaning of democracy? Is there a contradiction between democracy and giving privileges to the Jews on the exp expense of the Palestinians? And the answer was no. A demo by democratic state, democratic st Israeli state is to give privileges to the Jews. This is how they, they so they should feel contradictory and, 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 and conflict of interest between feeling uh, 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 that they are a democratic uh, uh, society and feeling that they, they are a Jewish state. They have the contradiction. I don't. There is no contradiction between fighting for the Palestinian freedom and between democracy. No contradiction whatsoever between fighting uh, for struggle, uh, for, uh, for justice for the Palestinians and fighting for justice and democracy to all. No, 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 no. I'm not the one who should feel conflict of interest. This is the Israelis who should feel a lot, who should who who have a lot, a lot of contradictions. Everything is contradicted there. Between democracy and Jewish state, there is a contradiction. Between the way they treat anti-Semitism and uh, they define anti-Semitism and the way they treat their own liberal people who who also fight for the Palestinian and defend the Palestinian rights. They are full of contradiction. And in order to defend Israel, to support Israel, you must feel a lot of contradiction. <laughs> if you, you cannot be a liberal or a left wing and support Israel. No, 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 you cannot. You must, if you want to be consistent with yourself, if you, and you, if you are support Israel, you are either a fascist or an extremist right wing or a one who doesn't believe in justice and in freedom. And, and, and supporting Israel means to justify, to continuously justify the Israeli crimes. And in order to justify the, the Israeli crimes, okay, you must say the Palestinians are the, the, the one who are violent. But no, I am a citizen, but I, I am not a Zionist. And I say, and I say as a Knesset member, I, I, I belong, I'm a member in a party which says there is no way to be a Jewish and democratic state at the same time. And my party called for a state for all the citizens. Like Germany, it's a state for all the citizens. There is, there is a racism and anti-Semitism in Europe, but it is a deviation from the, it would be the deviation of uh, the democratic values which, which the Europeans believe in. There is, there is a, yeah, there is a, 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 um, a gap between values and, 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 and European practices. But in Israel, there is no gap. To be a racist is to be an Israeli. 
the, the definition of Israeli nationality the, or, or uh, Israeli Watani nationalism is to be hostile to the Palestinians. Because to, be, to support Palestinians in Israel is against the Israeli uh, uh, um, um, feeling of nationality and nationalism. If you, if you, if you want to be a, an, an Israeli, a true Israeli inside Israel, you must be hostile to the Palestinians. So I have no contradiction whatsoever because, and, 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 you, and, and, and the victim, usually the victim, doesn't have any contradiction between uh, his sense of being a liberal and struggling for justice and, and his practices of defending his people. Uh, and, and Israel, as I said at, at, at the beginning, to struggle for democracy is a threat. So I am not the one who is suffering from contradictions and from hypocrisies. No, 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 no. It is the Israelis. And the Europeans who support the Israelis, of course. Now, is, is Zionism is also a colonialist project and imperial, imperialist project. Yes, that, that, that. it's to expand the power of Israel to the whole region uh, is part, uh, is, 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 is a strategy in order to, to defend Israel. You must not just be, uh, oh, uh, to oppress the Palestinians. In, in order to secure Israel, you must oppress the Palestinians. It's by definition. You cannot be a normal state. Israel as a Jewish state, Zionism is not, it, it is a racist ideology. And the United Nations has, has adopted a solution in the 70s, defining Zionism as a, as a racist um, ideology. But in order to, to defend yourself in, Israel, in the region, which is an Arab region, a Muslim region, yes, you must expand your power to, to, in, in a territorial terms and economic, in economic uh, terms. Uh, and also you must support dictatorships in the region. It's the only democratic, it's not a democracy. And you are, how a democracy, uh, how the, the, the closest friend of a democracy is the most dictatorship regimes in the region and the most, and the right wing in, in, in the whole world. So Sisi, Bashar al-Assad in Syria, Emirates and the, the Gulf regimes are the friends of Israel. So look at the friends, look at, uh, uh, Look at Israel's friends and at Israel's enemy, and you know who is Israel. We, we have um, um, an, uh, a sentence or um, I don't know, example in, 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 in Arabic. Look at your friends and at your enemy in order to know who you are. So look at Israel's enemy and Israeli friends. Friends, dictatorship all over the world, Trump, right wing, populist. <laughs> yeah, so. The, the most important, uh, I think, um, or um, um, one of the important questions is uh, about one state. Uh, I don't care. One state, two states, I want justice. I want to end the occupation. I want to end the suffering of my people. Now my people is, uh, is under attack. Those who say the Palestinians are violent, 222 Till a few hours ago, Palestinians have been killed by the Israelis, by F-16, by F-16, children, and, 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 and rockets. Okay, look at the balance of power. Justice is about balance of power also, and about the, 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 the violence, about... So, I, uh, to, to, go, to, to go back because of the time, I don't want one state or two states. I want justice. I want democracy. And I am saying to my colonizers, I am not asking you to go, to go back from where you came. You came to me. Okay, you want to live with me, but, but I cannot accept you to replace me. You came in order to replace me. So either one state or two states, I care about equality. I care about democracy, normality, a normal state. You cannot, you cannot delete my history and say coexistence. You, you cannot say self-determination, Jewish self-determination, 
means to oppress the Palestinians. Really. So you don't give any choice to the Jews unless to be racist and oppressors. This is the only choice. This is anti-Semitism. This is the most dangerous strategy of a way of to be anti-Semitic. To say to be Jews, it, to, to, to have a self-determination to Jews is to oppress the Palestinians, kill them, kick them out of their homeland, taking their homeland, taking their houses, kill their children with F-16. This is anti-Semitism. And I am, by decolonizing the state, by decolonizing the political situation, whether the outcome will be one or two states, the important issue is to decolonize the state. I am also giving an opportunity to, to, to the Israelis to be a normal people, to be a normal individuals, to be democratic. I am giving you, by decolonizing, by giving the Palestinians a possibility to live, you are giving also yourself a possibility to normality. It is the only way to live here in a normal situation, within a normal situation, to stop your imperialism, to stop your apartheid, to stop your crimes. So it is not a state for all the citizens, whether two states or one state, the concept of equality, the concept of not refusing privileges, refusing any. I am not inferior to you. I am superior to you in a moral sense. Ethically, I am superior to you because I am a victim and I am suggesting you living with me in equ with equality, in an equal and normal situation. And I can't teach you, as Rafif Ziyata said, I can't teach you democracy and I can't teach you humanity. And I am the representative of the Holocaust survivor. I am the representative of the Holocaust victims, not Israel, not Israel. Because the lessons from, from Holocaust, what? Don't be racist, don't kill others, and don't be silent. And don't be silent. And if the Germans want to support and, 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 and to understand Holocaust, they should not be silent. And they should not support the, those who, who are killing. The criminal, they should not support it. This is the only lesson from Holocaust. What is the lesson from Holocaust? To secure the Jews, but not as criminals, not to make the Jews criminals. And this is making the Jews criminals. Holocaust is to secure the Jews as a human being, not as inferior, but not as superior, superior also and criminals. And Israel perceives the only way of securing Jews is to be an oppressor, a oppressive apparatus, a colonialist apparatus. So I don't care about one state, two states. I, don't, I care about my liberty. First of all, to let me live because I am, it is a silent, it's a silent uh, killing. The siege on Gaza is a silent death. It's, it, it's, it's a slow death and a silent death and a silent evacuation in Jerusalem and a silent political oppress, oppressing, oppressor, uh, oppress, oppression to the Palestinians in 48. So now ending Gaza, I don't, I don't want anyone to, 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 to be busy with the, the question of one state to state theoretical question. I want to end the siege on Gaza. I want now, now, now to end the attack on Gaza and not repeat it. And I want freedom to Gaza. I want freedom to my people. I want to live in my hometown, in my homeland. And I, 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 I agree, I, I compromise to, to coexist with the Israelis within a normal democratic state. And this is, cannot be by all that time adopting the foolish and stupid sentence of Israel defending itself. Israel is, 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 is conducting, I don't know the verb, a, a war crime against the Palestinians. It is, and you are not helping Israel by supporting Israel. You are not helping the Israeli, the, Isra the democratic Israelis, the lib liberal to democratic Israelis who are leaving to Germany. How many, how many Israelis live in Berlin? I don't, 200,000? They are, they are, they are, they are, they are, 
the, 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 liberal, the liberal democratic anti-Zionist Israelis are leaving because you are supporting the fascists. At the end, supporting Israel is, the, is supporting the Israeli fascist, is, the, is supporting the Israeli right wing. Although it is a consensus, more than 70% of the society in Israel is a right wing. But you are, you, by supporting Israel, you are not giving Israel a chance, not giving the Israelis a chance to live in a nor within a normal state and in a normal life and have a normal life. All of them want to live or to kill the, or to continue living by killing the Palestinians. So the, the, the question now, when Israel is attacking now, now I, I have my mobile and every two hours, how many Palestinians Israelis have killed? Now, now, emergency to stop the attack now, to stop uh, uh, expelling the Palestinians in Sheikh Jarrah, to stop Judaizing and expelling the Palestinians in Jerusalem. Don't, the Palestinians doesn't want now to answer, the Palestinians themselves don't care to answer the question of two states, one state. Just because they are under attack. The one who is under attack and, 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 and is losing his life doesn't care in, in, in which regime he wants to live. He, he wants you to support, to support him to continue li li living, to, 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 to stop the attack, to, to stop the oppression, to stop the siege, to, to stop expelling him from his houses. Um, I, mean, I think that would be a really good place to stop if that's okay, just because of time. But thank you so, so much for everything you've just said. Um, I don't think I can follow that <laughs> with anything apart from the fact that you're just completely right. <laughs> uh, but thank you so much for taking the time and so much time to speak to us tonight um, from Nazareth and from telling us so much about what's going on. And we really appreciate it. And I know everybody who's been watching has been really appreciative of everything you've said and the time you've taken to speak to us and just, you know, and being here with us when obviously all of this is going on, as you just so rightly pointed out, you know, there's people literally dying this minute. <laughs> um, and so thank you again so, so much for being here. Um, yeah, and I mean, thank, thank you to all our speakers. I mean, sorry, I think I interrupted you. <laughs> no, I said thank you. That's it. Oh. <laughs> no, well, we really thank you. But, and also thank you to Christina. Thank you to Susan, who unfortunately already had to leave the call. Um, thank you all for being here tonight. We really appreciate uh, you taking the time to see us um, for this really uh, important discussion. Um, uh, Phil's going to uh, say a couple of announcements about what the things that we're planning. I have just one little announcement for those who are in Berlin. If you're watching, um, and if you've always wanted to be more active, or if you are interested in more active, if you're trying to re-engage or meet people, we'll be starting a monthly Krupa, a Krusha for Allah, um, in Bilgesarai in, in Kreuzberg. On the, the first one is going to be on the 4th of June. Everybody's invited. It's going to be an event where you can come and eat together, meet new people to talk and you know connect. We're trying to kind of bring together, bring together a community of um, activists, people who want to kind of get involved in what's going on in Berlin, uh, not just on Palestine, anything that's on, uh, the, we, we deal with a lot of issues um, within our group. Uh, and of course, uh, everybody is very welcome. So that will be that will be on the website and all our social media as well. Um, and then Phil has some final announcements and uh, I think that'll be it from us for tonight. <laughs> thanks, Hannah. Thanks everyone again. Just a couple of announcements to the many people are asking, well, what we can do. Just before, maybe to put it in context, last Saturday we had what I think was the biggest ever Palestine solidarity demonstration in, in Germany, it's certainly the biggest in the 25 years I've been living here. 15,000 people, that was largely organised by Palestina Schricht, which is an organisation of young Palestinians, and they are planning all sorts of act act activities. Uh, we can expect an open letter from them to the uh, to the German government in the next in the next couple of days. And I would advise everybody to watch out for what they're doing. We are doing a meeting together with Palestinian District and the Yudhishthima, which is going to be on Saturday, the fifth of 
uh, June in Neukölln. In, in, in Neukölln. Now, here's an interesting thing. The meeting's called Cancel Palestina. It's in German because we don't just want to talk to English. We actually want to take the argument to the German people here and get German people involved. And so we're organising this meeting in German uh, with the title Cancel Palestine about how Palestinian events have been, bu uh, have been booked. It was formally registered as part of the programme of Neukölln. Neukölln. The programme of Neukölln Neukölln came out on Saturday and our meeting is, is absent from it. The meeting will carry going on whether or not it's carried in the, in the programme or not, but we think that's kind of symptomatic of the way Palestine discussion is, uh, is, is carried out here. We're going to do that. We've been invited by Die Linke Neukölln to do a specific meeting on Die Linke and, um, and Palestine. And if anyone else is interested in organising um, meetings and would like international speakers, either from Palestine or on Israel or from from us, then we'd be pleased uh, ple ple pleased to help. Um, we're also planning a meeting la la later in June together with Colombian activists about what's happening there. Uh, we've got all sorts of things. The best thing way to get in touch with us is we work together with the leftberlin.com website, which does a weekly newsletter which goes out every Saturday, and you can find out more about all the act activities which we've talked about talked about there. I think enough people have spoken spoke for today, but there are things. Oh, the one very, very last thing. Um, there may well soon be an initiative from non Germans uh, to call on the German left to finally take a position on Palestine. If you want to know more about this initiative, please get in touch with us. And that's also something to expect in the uh, coming week or so. Thank you, everybody, uh, for attending. Uh, we uh, said the, the next meeting like this will either be the uh, the one on the 5th or the one in Colombia later in June. Would like to see as many people there as possible. And now it will be in a long Zoom meeting, but I think it's been very worthwhile. So um, you can go now to um, rest a little bit. And particular thanks to the speakers. Um, Susan is not here uh, anymore. And Christine and Hanin, who are, are, are still stayed to the bitter end. Thank you, everyone. Oh.